Almighty Father, once more, God, we have seen where the reality of sin is evident. But Father, we are just thanking you for the time that you have lent Andre to us. And you in your wisdom, you in all your power, you in all your might, you have done what you want to do because you are the creator. As we gather in this fashion, dear Lord, to funeralize Andre, God, we come, some of us, with bitter feelings. Some of us, God, with all kinds of emotions welling up in us. But we are mindful that you who knows everything best is deserving of all the praise today. And so, Father, I pray that you will take all of us in charge, that you will be with the family members, that you'll be with the friends. And Lord, even as we reminisce, even as we talk about your son, Oh God, I pray that you'll place in all of us hearts the hope that one day death itself shall die and we will all, if faithful, live with you forever. Until then, dear God, keep us faithful, keep us true. Take us through the proceedings this afternoon. And Father, help us. For Christ's sake. Well, I said afternoon, but still morning. Good morning, everyone. You may be seated. As we come this morning to celebrate the life and to bask in the memory of one that most of us have grown to admire, to love, and to cherish. It is my wish that we will celebrate Andre. We will live on those times that he made us laugh. We will live on those times that he himself educates us. And we will live and to continue maybe where he has left off, someone who was passionate about serving. As we continue this service, I'm going to just share with you a few things. Uh, those who are participating, you will utilize the low platform. And just in case you need to use the restrooms, they are to my left. So, and we are going to be asking that you do not walk across the platform because as you see it is being streamed and so so if you're on this side and you need to get to the restroom just go to the back and use either doors and the restrooms are to the left just right of that side so just in case you need to use the restroom they are to my left um, and we're just reminding all those who are participating females Again, no trousers on the platform and no sleepless. And we continue with the service. As we continue, we're going to be asking Loan Doily, who is a cousin, who will be reading the first lesson, which is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17, which will be followed by a musical selection by Dr. Stilmany Whited Sterling, cousin, then we will have the second lesson come to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 to 55 by Rosemary Samuels, an aunt. And then after, right after the second lesson, we will have the homily coming to us from the host pastor of this church, who I share with you a little about him. He, he serves the West Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists as a pastor and also the communication director. Uh, he's someone who loves
people. Uh, and I admire him more so because of the, the genuine witness with which he serves and always tries to be there for individuals. I speak of the pastor, Pastor Jonathan James Myrie. Right after the second lesson, he will speak. Thank you. Morning. This working? Oh, morning. So the first lesson will be taken from First Thessalonians four, thirteen to seventeen. Thank you. Sorry about that. Morning. So the first lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17. But we would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them that fall asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as the rest who has no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also that are fallen asleep, in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we all are alive, that are left unto the coming, coming of the Lord, shall in no wise precede them that are fallen asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in the Christ shall rise first. Then we that are alive, that are left, shall together with them be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 51 through 57. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Members, members of the bereaved family, the elders, Pastor Billings, pastor of the Grange District of Seventh Day Adventist Churches, other elders and leaders of the church here, friends and well wishes all who have come in support and to share with the family at this time. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on behalf of my family and I, I'd like to extend sincere condolences to the family of Andre on his passing. I met Andre uh, some time ago and we connected then probably because we would have some things in common. He is in media, was in media and entertainment, and uh, I am in media, in church media. And, uh, and so, you know, that is a common thread and a common bond. Wow. That, uh, and I discovered at that, that time when we met that he had served at our high school here in Montego Bay, the Harrison Memorial High School. I served that institution as head boy. And uh, the school is represented today on the program. I saw the principal, the knowledge of presence, Mrs. Keisha Allen. And I thought to myself uh, then, how great would it be to have such an ardent professional on my team? And you will forgive me, but um, I, I, I want to surround myself with some people who are great at their task. And I am saddened by the fact that I can't have him on my team now. But there is a kingdom that's coming, and I don't know how the Lord is going to set up media in the new kingdom. But I pray that an astute professional like Andre was, that he will be on God's media team. Albeit the cameras will be much, much more advanced than what we have. But he was such a wonderful person very easy to get along with, uh, very easy to talk to. And uh, represented here today are also the Kiwanians, specifically those from Westmoreland capital who are here. He served as distinguished president there, and I won't speak to that because they have more information that they will share. But it speaks to his personality and who he was, one who who sought to serve, serve humanity, serve mankind. And I pray that the life of service that he lived 
that God will transcend with those who are left behind. Uh, his aunt and cousin are members of our congregation here, and so we are uh, very well acquainted with them, Sister Whitehead Sterling, and so we um, want you to know the entire family to know. We have been praying for you. We will continue to pray for you. I have a difficult task, and I struggled with this for about a few weeks now, Pastor Billings, um, because what do I say to individuals who are coming to my congregation for the very first time? Um, and brought a camera, and I itch because for one, some of you may not come back to this congregation. And I would love, love you to come back. And, and um, while I would love you to come back, I am mindful that some of you may not come back. So maybe this is the only time I have to preach to you. And so if this is the only time I have to preach to you, then I have to tell you all that's on my heart. The program already indicates that this is, you'll be here for four hours. So I'm only going to borrow two hours out of it. I mean, I think it's a reasonable offer. I'm only asking for 50% of, of the time. And the Seventh-day Adventist Church works on democracy, so we go by votes. All in favor say aye, those who vote say nay. The eyes, the eyes, I think the eyes, I think the eyes. But I think it's a good, a good offer. Uh, and I'll tell you why I'm only asking for half the time. Because I settled on the fact that I, I preach a message. I've, spoke, I've had a chance to preach this message before, but there are some gems in this that I want to get to this congregation. So I've spoken on this particular passage before, but I think that it's very important that I share those thoughts that have jumped out at me with you today. And it's 12 chapters in the Bible, so it's quite a bit to cover. Now, I talk fast, so I promise you I will not need more than 120 minutes. Pastor Williams, and he will be close by me. If I go over that, he has permission to just pull on my coat and say, Pastor, this is it. I speak to you from the book Ecclesiastes. Solomon the wise man would have written this as guidance for his son. And so, one who God had chosen to be king is in Israel. The third king, in fact. And Solomon has a peculiar upbringing. At least there's someone in church today who thinks that because of where I come from, my destiny is hinged on that. He has a very dysfunctional family that he came out of. His father was an adulterer and a murderer. His mother was an adulteress. Nonetheless, out of the marriage between David and Bathsheba, after Uriah was murdered by David, the child that she was pregnant with, that David tried to give Uriah a jacket. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, that child died, and the, next, the child that was born from their marriage is Solomon. So wherever, you and I don't have any say in our birth and upbringing, but we can choose to do the right thing. We can choose to follow God. And so this man, chosen as the third king of Israel, God gave him wisdom and great understanding, and with that, multiplied riches. And so Solomon penned these words. So now my time begins now. Father, as we open your word, speak to us in clear tones. And may the written word 
be lifted up so that the living word Jesus will be lifted up in this place and draw all of us close to him now we pray in his mighty name amen so Solomon wrote this particular book Ecclesiastes and as we navigate through the book you'll recognize that at the time of his writing he was an aged man he had gone through several experiences and had, as he chronicles to his son, he said, listen, I have said in my heart, I have sought in my heart to give myself all the things in this life that I desire. He said, whatever my eyes saw that I desired, I went after it. He said, when they came out with a new brand of Hennessy, I got it. I gave myself to wine, the best that you could find. He says, he says, I build myself houses. And listen, man, when a man who has wealth at his disposal, he has, there's no limit to his expense that he can what kind of house, Brother Cameron, distinguished president, would he build mansions, I would say, in Jamaican terms? So he said, I built houses. I planted the best vineyards and gardens. There was everything that I needed was there. I had all the things. He said, as if that were enough, I had swimming pools. Or oh, you think that it's now that infinity pools were invented? Solomon says, I had it all. I built it. And being a man, he would be jealous of me. Because he sang about how many women men should have. But I had more than my hands could count. I had wives by the hundreds. And concubines. Women were falling at my feet. You don't believe me? A queen came all the way from Ethiopia. Just to check me out. I don't know where Andre's queen came from. But Solomon said I had it all. Whatever my eyes saw. Whatever I thought of that I needed. I gave it to myself. I, I, I did it. If Frank Sinatra had been around then, maybe the song that he would play would be, I did it my way. He said, I had the best musicians around. Probably if it were here and now, he would have found a way to get cartel to show up. Maybe virtual. Yep. But he said, I, I implored the best musicians. I had Weepo, Rory, and Cancer, and Radiger as selectors. Oh, oh you don't. These are church people, Ellen. They don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know who I'm talking about now. You forgive the preacher because someone in here today, Pastor Billy, is saying, Pastor, where have you been going? Well, the truth is that I have not always been in God's church. Thank God for rescuing me now. Yes, yes, yes. Oh At least there's someone here who's saying, Pastor, uh, I don't know where you've been going, but I haven't been to those places in a very long time since God has rescued me. But, 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 but now he said, I had everything. But he says, when I consider it, all of these things were vanity and vexation of spirit. None of it brought the true happiness that my heart desired. None of it brought the joy that I expected it to bring. Because after the party, I was lonely. After the nights with those women, I was lonely. After all the drinking and merrymaking, I was empty. 
For you see, there is a place and a space that only God can fill. And none of the things that we consider important in this life can ever take the place of the Almighty God. So I jump down to chapter 11. I did tell you I have 12 chapters to preach. And he said, he said, he said, he said, listen now. He said, listen, young man, rejoice in your youth. Rejoice while you're, you're young. Be happy because when you're my age, you just can't do the things that you did. You can't conquer the world when you're old and the bones are not as strong as they used to be when the muscles don't respond, when your mind is not even the same. He says, rejoice in your youth. Did, 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 I, did I get to chapter 10? Can I just, to chapter 11, let me just go back a little bit to chapter 12, because it's chapter 10, because this is important. In, chap, in, in, chapter, in chapter 9, rather, 9 and verse 10 and 11, he said, he said, listen, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might because there is no work or device or knowledge in the grave where you're going. In other words, Solomon said, listen, one day you shall die. But while you're living, give God your best. Give up your best to the master. He said, do it with all your might. Achieve those goals that you require. But make sure that they line up with the will of the almighty God. For when you're dead, you're dead. And the dead knows nothing. And then he said, he said, listen, he said, listen, he said, listen, he said, listen, verse 11 of chapter 9, he says, he says, the race is not for the swift, neither the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. But he says, the reason why people are successful is that they make use of time and chance, time and opportunity. While you are alive, you have time to serve God. You have opportunities that God has opened up to you to be not just the best of you, but the best that God desires you to be. So in chapter 11, now he says, rejoice in your youth. He says, do the things that you find pleasing to your eyes. He says, it's a man, if you find these things pleasurable, yeah, take up the hedonism principle and do whatever you feel like doing, whatever brings pleasure. Do it. But, he says, when you do those things, make sure you consider that one day you shall have to answer to the Almighty God. He said, listen, do all that you feel like doing, but one day you will have to answer to God. And how shall your answer be? What shall you say to the great God of heaven? So he says, now remember the creator in the days of your youth. Young man, young woman, older man, older woman. There is a call from Solomon to make the knowledge of the creator supreme in your life. For he says, one day, you shall stand in judgment before God. So in closing, he says, son, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He says, when you consider life, when you consider your life, when the rubber hits the road, when you one day lie in a bed dying, says, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Reverence God. See the knowledge and service and worship to God as the number one thing in your life. He says, fear God and keep his commandments. Do God's will. Be obedient to God. Follow his will. For this is the whole duty of mankind. Man, you were built to serve God. You were created to serve him. Unfortunately, we find 
that we have digressed from what God has designed us to be. And now we follow after our own inclination, not giving heed to what God requires of us. But I've called upon you today. You'll stop by in paying tribute to your family member, to your friend, to your, to your confidant, Andre. Now, as you have stopped by this place, I want you to understand that the most important thing in this life is to serve God, is to fear him, is to follow him, is to do God's will. And if you do nothing else, make sure that you're following God. For Solomon says, for God shall bring all your works into judgment. And one day you will stand before the monarch of this universe and he will open up your secret cabins. He will open up all the secrets of your hearts because no secret is there that God does not know. Are you with me? He knows everything about you and his desire is to save you. Oh, Jesus says, he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast him out. But one day the monarch of this universe will open the books and will read the records of your life. And what shall those records say? What will be written about you? What will happen when that judgment comes? I've shared this experience as I take my seat before me, but it makes a point that I'm closing. I had to go to court. Please don't judge me. I had to go to court. Uh, I got a citation. The officer had stopped me. I thought it was for speeding, but it wasn't because I was driving within the speed limit. It's just disturbing. But when he checked my documents, he gave me a ticket. And in the moment when I received the ticket, it came to my mind, but uh, I didn't articulate it then. That boy, Babylon really have it all for Jason. <laughs> but uh, I got a ticket to go to court because he said I was driving without insurance. I said, officer, I, I, I just insured my vehicle a month ago. And that's for the whole year, so I have insurance. I said, well, that's the problem. Your cover note has expired. And I have no proof that you actually have insurance. Francis Ensworth. So he said, you know, you can go to court. I've never been to court before. This was the first time I was going to go to court. And it was a difficult moment for me told my wife and thought she would console me. She said, honey, I hope they don't arrest you. <laughs> but uh, prepared myself for court in the best way I could. Watched several episodes of Matlock <laughs> and Perry Mason. Elder, just to make sure my courtroom jargon were, was, was where it should be, how I was going to relate to the judge and, and to present my opening arguments in my case and I had all things worked out. Found my best, made sure that I got my Sabbath suit down at the laundry. So I was nice and looking sharp. Chose gray. I hear gray is a good color for the lawyers. So I chose gray. Tried to get a Natasha case to go. So I would look the part, but I couldn't get one. So I settled with what I could and I went to court. Didn't know so many people broke traffic laws in Jamaica. Court was full when I got down to Montego Bay. Uh, but eventually I, I got there and they were calling names. People were coming up to the door, going in. And I realized what was happening in a, in a, in a, in a few moments that the folks who were going in, they, the charges were read. They pled whether guilty or not guilty. But interestingly, everyone was pleading guilty. I thought to myself, I'm the only innocent guy here today. So everybody guilty, and then they came out, uh, they went to a cashier, paid a fine, and went home. So as I got close, I realized the judge was saying, you know, like, uh, 3,000, 5,000, or 10 days, or, you know. And I said, okay. But I'm the only innocent guy at court today. And then a man showed up to answer to a charge. 
And when he answered, he said, not guilty. I said, there's a man after my own heart. He's a big fellow, but when the judge started to just question him, all of a sudden, nervousness. You could, you could see it from outside the courtroom where I was, that, that I was shaking. And the big man was turning into a mouse as the judge was badgering him. And then she said some words I'll never forget. You are bound over until she gave a date some months. And then I thought he would have to stay in jail until that court case come up. So I was there listening to him. And then finally they called my name, Jonathan Myrie. And I stepped up. By this time, my two knees are very acquainted with each other. They are shaking hands, Pastor. Left and right, I don't know what noise they were making, but they were drumming. And when they called me and she, she and, and, and by the way, I was confident earlier because the judge was a woman. So I was happy. I said, man, this, she's going to be very rational. But when I stood before and she said, she read the, I said, what is your plea? And I said, guilty, your honor. She said, $3,000 are 10 days. I went out, paid the $3,000 and went home. <laughs> Truth is that I was an innocent man. But I pled guilty. But what does that have to do with us here today as we finalize Andre? Well, none of us here are, are not guilty. We're all guilty before God. We've all broken God's laws. We have all wandered because all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Almighty God. Every single one of us, we have transgressed God's law. We are guilty. We are condemned to die. But thanks be to God who grants us the victory through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who provided Jesus as a way for us to escape as a sacrifice for our life, his life for mine. Yes. Jesus died to save you. He paid the penalty so you don't have to pay the penalty. And so when it comes to judgment time, when you have to stand before God in judgment, when God shall open the chronicles of your life, you don't have to be alone because in that moment you certainly will need an advocate. You certainly will need a lawyer. And when you're wrapped up and tied up with Jesus, when you've trusted Jesus with your life, at that moment when you need someone, Jesus will stand up for you. For he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And when the life of Jesus covers you, you will be able to pass through God's judgment. When you stand in judgment before God, your life will not cut it because all of our righteousness is like filthy rags before God. But the life of Jesus is pure and sinless and he will cover you with his life so that you can stand. Oh, Paul puts it this way, you can come boldly before his throne that you may obtain help in your time of need. I want to challenge someone here today to trust God. Give God number one in your life. Because all the things of this world are vanity and vexation of the spirit. When we reach to the end of life's journey, only a life with Jesus really, really, really matters. May God bless you.
God is good and all the time. God is good. It is not the length of life, but the depth of life. He who is not every day conquering some fear has not learned the secret of life. These lines penned by Ralph Waldo Emerson remind us that in order to fully experience life in its entirety, we must confront and seek to overcome our daily challenges. Andre Antonio Whitehead, age 39, courageously faced his most difficult challenge during the last weeks of his life before passing away peacefully at the Cornell Regional Hospital in St. James. Andre was born to parents, Anthony Whitehead and Leon Samuel, on June 15, 1984. He would proudly share during moments of reflection that he was raised by his three moms, who were his doting aunts, Donnett Whitehead, Georgia Whitehead, and Denise Whitehead. His educational journey included Samuel Mar Infant, Harrison Memorial Preparatory, and Harrison Memorial High School, where he served as head boy and was valedictorian. He attained his tertiary education at the Northern Caribbean University and the Michael University College. Batch 168. Andre was an educated educator who had a passion for empowering young lives. He taught biology, chemistry, and physics, and positively impacted lives at Urban High School and Wilmot Academy. He was also an entrepreneur and started Whitehead Media Entertainment and Acer Weddings which he operated until his transition on February 6, 2024. Andre was the consummate professional who was highly sought after because of his outstanding work ethic and for being a master of his craft. He had an endearing personality and the uncanny ability to find happiness in the simple pleasures of life. Andre's invaluable contribution to his community and country included his gift of volunteerism. He was a proud member of the Kiwanis Club of Westmoreland Capital, where he served as one of distinguished presidents. Andre's love and passion for life has not ended as his loved ones will continue to honor his remarkable legacy. His legacy lives on in the life of, lives on in the love of his life, his daughter, Alice Simone Whitehead. We continue with our tributes. Random memory were done by Denise Whitehead Aunt, followed by the Kiwanis Club of West Milan Capital. Then we have the Michael University College, followed by Raina Whitehead to so come in that order. When Andre passed, a lot of memories just came running through my mind. I just wrote on a few of them. I knew you were going to be a leader, a force to be reckoned with at an early age. When your cousin Cheryl 
was late to pick you up from school after searching all of SAC for you. They decided to report that you were missing to the police. And alas, when they walked into the station, there you were sitting as calm as ever. You always knew how to fix things. You were curious as a child, pulling things apart and fixing them. As my sister Dawn would say, you always had some kind of experiment going on in the room. You did not get to be a scientist growing up, but at least you taught the science subjects to your minds. You were a genius at what you did, operating white and media entertainment and ASO wedding. The setup of a venue, that perfect wedding shot, you just had the knack to do things. I remember attending you want this function together and you were looking around and you told me the position of the boxes were all wrong because of the acoustics in the hall. They would have echo in the mics and when the function started, that's exactly what happened. A clean, clear sounds. That's what you offered. JCDC staff can attest to that, right? I taught you how to drive and to earn your PhD, your pothole dodging degree. <laughs> I assisted you in buying your first car, that noisy black monster that you love so much that I hate it. You are giving so. You love to assist the less fortunate, especially the kids, and volunteer your time. And we can attest to that, as you are a member of the Michael University College Circuit Club, and as an adult, a distinguished president of the Kiwanis Club of Westmoreland Capital. I am still waiting on my official photo shoot. I bought the stone. The batteries you bought on our last shopping spree in Mobile, when you were pretending to be in New York, like when you were a kid, are still waiting to be installed. We have so many unfinished business and future plans that will never materialize. Our lives were so intertwined that it's gonna take forever to untangle. I remember the birth of your daughter and the time we spent picking out that perfect outfit to wear to meet your daughter, the love of your life. I remember that Sunday when you made that call to me and I took you to the doctor. You said it would be fine. But deep down, it didn't feel right to me. I slept right there beside you and watched over you that night. In the morning, you said that you were feeling okay, you were feeling better, and would, do, would stay home and do some editing. I remember insisting that you made those appointments. Who knew? Cheese curls that you hid on the pillows. 
I now invite the members of the Kiwanis Club of Westman Capital to stand. You may be seated. Other members from Division 25 and other divisions could you please stand. Distinguished President Andre Whitehead exemplify the words of Theodore Roosevelt who said, a great man is always ready and willing to be a servant of the society. He was a committed member of our club and served faithfully to the very end. D.P. Andre, who was no stranger to volunteerism, was sponsored by D.P. Dines Whitehead Ennis, and joined the club in 2018. He led the club to distinguished status in the administrative year 2021-2022 under the theme soar, which means stand out and represent, which reminded members and inspired others to be more and to do more for others, especially the vulnerable. His stewardship during his tenure as president was noteworthy as the members were engaged and remain true to the mission of Kiwanis during a time when the country was still reeling from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. His organizational skills, keen attention to detail, resourcefulness, excellence, communication skills, and ability to empower others were some of the qualities that allowed him to serve effectively. D.P. Andre utilized his expertise to improve the efficiency and viability of the club. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he ensued that as a club, we had access to the Zoom platform almost immediately when face-to-face -face interaction were suspended and that we resume face-to-face -face meetings once it was safe to do so. He seamlessly incorporated technology in club activities which helped to improve the overall experience for members and the wider community. Before D.P. Andre's transition, he was serving as a member of the board as one of the directors that had oversight for young children prior to one. Even though he was ill, he still wanted to ensure that the activities planned for the year were followed through, such as the club's annual Christmas street 
for the children and staff at the pediatric ward at the Sablamar Public General Hospital. On the day of the treat, D.P. Andre, while in hospital himself, shared via video, call his best wishes for the treat and for the children who were on the ward. As a club, some activities such as karaoke or movie night were elevated to a theater-like experience as D.P. Andre insisted on including all the bells and whistles associated with elements such as light and impeccable sound effects. It didn't matter the number of persons at these events, as D.P. Andre would painstakingly set up his equipment as if he was setting up for a national production. He was a true professional who believed in providing the best possible service and experience. D.P. Andre also shared his expertise in Division 25 and worked with several committees, including the Entertainment Committee and Sports Day Committee. His equipment from Whitehead Media Entertainment was also utilized to enhance the experience at some of the division's activities. A void has been created which our loss and our community has been deprived of a gentle giant. Our club, the Kiwanis Club of Westmoreland Capital, will continue to soar as D.P. Andre's rich legacy has been intricately interwoven in the tapestry of our club's history. There is a silver box seat. It's 56, 54, 18. We're half in the room. It is back in the driveway. That's a silver box seat at the 56, 54, 18. Members of the Ministerial Fraternal, family, friends, well wishers, members of the Kiwanis family, JCDC family, good afternoon. I'm Jermaine Williams, a bachelor of Andre. And I'm Brian Lurie, and I was a bachelor and the groom of the college. Yes, I know many would know me as a friend or JCDC connection, but many would not know that. We actually went to college together, so I've known him since the year 2003. In August of the year 2003, students from all 14 parishes and also other Caribbean islands traveled down 1A Marasco Road to start what would be considered a phenomenal journey at a famous institution known as the Michael College, now the Michael University College. That would have changed our lives forever. We would have heard much about this institution and were very curious to become a part of it. We had geared up for not just the journey, but to enjoy the experiences, the type of transformation that would have taken place, also to meet some of the most treasured people that would become a part of our journey. Some of us were very early. Some of us were a few days late. One such person was Andre Whitehead. He missed orientation. I remembered when he came in, and as a good first-year brother, I assisted him up to his room with his luggage. 
he was placed in Buxton House, and of course, we were on the same hall of residence. There was not much time to settle in because classes were scheduled to begin the day after the weekend. Although he missed the formal part of orientation, we did not plan to take any punishment as a first-year brother who was out of place. He was educated on the expectations, such as the behavior that was expected, dress code, and the duties on the hall also preparing the Eli Matalan Gymnasium for a general assembly on a Tuesday morning. From the first time we met, I realized he was a calm and what seemed to be a kind-hearted individual. After the start of classes, I would check in with him every now and then just to see how things were going. Although we were in separate houses and doing different courses, there was one thing that connected us and that was the heart to serve others. We became members of the Circle K Club. This is the college and university club for Kiwanis. We attended meetings. We served in many different projects. We were of the belief that we could make the world a better place in which to live by changing one child, one community at a time. Circle K provided opportunities for service, leadership, and fellowship. It wasn't a coincidence because Andre was a very kind-hearted individual and for, and for those who interacted with him, you can also relate. Andre was a brilliant young man. He understood the assignment that education was important. Marcus Garvey said, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. We are reminded in the Boxton Extra. The longer I live, the more I am certain that the great difference between men, between the feeble and the powerful, the great and insignificant, is energy, invincible, determination, a purpose once fixed, and then death or victory. That quality will do anything that can be done in this world. And no talents, no circumstances, no opportunities will make a two-legged creature a man without it. And that's the Buxton extract by Sir Thomas F. Buxton. I happen to have been the person in charge of the final year magazine. And of course, I needed talented and creative individuals to work with. Andre was one such person. He was extremely good with creating graphics, and so you can understand he became a valuable member of the team. He was always very calm and collective. At times, I was worried about meeting deadlines, and he was not always on time, but in the end, he always came through. He, has always, he was always saying, no worry yourself, man, I'm going to get it done. This one took the cake. I don't know if it's because I was a countryman, but my experiences enabled me to survive on campus. There's one particular weekend that I don't know what happened, but all the washing machines were down. I never used to wash using the washing machine. I always hand wash. I'm from the country, and I know how to do it. Um, there was a crowd in the washroom that Saturday morning. Mark you, I wash from Friday evening, so by Saturday morning, Sun is up, my clothes dry, take them up, so when the crowd comes down, my clothes doesn't, you know, get mixed up with other, with my brother's clothing on the line. So there was a crowd in the washroom. I lived on, in room eight, which is the ground floor, and the washroom was not far away. So I went over to see what was happening, and I queried, and they said the machines were down. So there I saw Andre. I said, my youth, what are you doing? This is not how somebody washed. Andre literally was playing in the water because he did not know how to wash. And I grabbed my blue soap and the, 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 the washing powder, and I said, bro, this is how you wash. And I literally took the clothes, and I showed him how to do it. And I said, this is how you, as a matter of fact, I grabbed the washing brush as well. Because guess what, we were brothers. We lived together for three years, and so we had the responsibility to take care of each other. And that I did. And I remember Sheldon commented, which was one of his friends, 
And he was saying, I was good, you know, because my hands now make no knives. You know? But as you know, you know, growing up in the country, that's a very good thing. You know, that's one of the memories. All right, I would like to share some other memories from our batchmates. But first of all, I'll give Brian an opportunity to share because he was actually his roommate and they both did double up and Well, let's So we, when we came the first time, we both of us stayed in Lake apparently. I don't know why, why that, but when I came, there was a tradition that they used to grow us. And you're a first year, a first man. And then we know that we have third years and second year students there. So this particular student named Big Law, it is so rest in peace, began every year. So, and then I was talking about things and we were told that we must report to Big Law. Germany, Germany was in Africa, right? we were in Boston. Best right? So, when Big Law, when they went from this big, hard, Big Law was about six feet, Big Law heavy, Big Law pulled up the stairs. Right? Pulled up the stairs. They looked from Big Law's shoes. Big Law heavy like a And then we were, we were told to report to you, we report to you now. And we have Standing, you know. I didn't understand. I was standing before him and then we thought Andre didn't want it. Can anyone guess what my nickname was wrong? Big Lam and Big Lam is not understand English. Where is Bob? No, 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 no. That man is right here? Then this man must be a black head. <laughs> I'm saying, so why? <laughs> why me have to that way? <laughs> but you're so happy that from first year to third year, and then I did a share, we must be work off to always together. And uh, during those times, I'm the love you, right? And come through that. From the time, I'm in my best of love you, right? Some life, some something. We'll do my answer, come through that, and so. Why do you do that over things every year? You would have buy something from the house in fact. And you used to play a lot of games. And you're a little more than an idea. You're a little more than an idea. Where are we going, Jeremy? Jeremy? Anyway, never got to have one. But we used to love to have one room, Jeremy, and said, one room was undying. What kind of thing do you do? I'm proud. Everybody want to come to Andre. And then to add it to the issue, I put him um, outside, you know, outside of us. So everything ends there and everything happens there. Right? And outside of us, we were up to us at the time, coming up and up. So we can't be an agent, be it without anything. And then we have to strategize how we are going to do the events and how we are going to win. They are very competitive. And uh, when you were here, you know, I used to feel a lot of and they have this word in the name of Zanzi. He was, um, yeah, we don't call him, he might have been. No, we stopped Zanzi, the brown guy, the brown man, eh? We have an albino, yes. Yeah, man, we have an albino. So, we need to say that Zanzi is never like good. He never liked to warn me. He might have always come, and as Angela is preparing all the homes that we play with music, I'm Mr. Zanzi that we work. So Mr. Zanzi now has students, as me, her brown man. So Mr. Dancing and I want to school and school and ask. Yeah, but I want to talk to some students. Plus, age man is a bit shot man then. Then, over time, Mr. Dancing gets bigger and bigger. And Andrea, this is not for my own room now. But I don't know. But Andrea loves her anyway. He's like, don't be careful. Andrea used to love very hard. I mean, I said, why, why, nobody? Angelo was a big part of my life. Um, you know my sisters, you know my niece, them. And I know they're watching now, so they go. Yeah, man, they, whenever they come to Jamaica, they always visit him and my mother is on photo shoot. You know, it's a photo shoot. If you look on his, if you look on his mask, if you look on his Instagram, they still miss them. Yeah, man, they ever do them photo shoot. Yeah, man. So, eventually, they talk about it all. Do you know that? Because I'm using a 
and visitors. You know, don't you? This is a museum. Yes, a wedding that you can know. And some of you are well known. So you can ask them to look at them for a moment and they do not be so. I saw me and Angel come up. I never know. I think I didn't think so. But of course, I do look at it though. But Angel is a good one. So a few fond memories of Andre. Andre was a part of the, I noticed you didn't make mention of the Chaps family. But Andre was a part of the Chaps family, which basically it was a group of friends and who supported each other. As Chaps bros, they were matching outfits on a Monday, which was a blue day. They did not leave each other when they were going to the cafeteria. They moved in unison for almost every event. O'Shea and Harriet, who is also a Chops brother, he's in Canada now. He said, Whitehead was the first person who introduced me to mixing music on a laptop. It was called Atomic Music at the time. I actually learned a few skills from him and developed a love for mixing from my interactions with him. We used to refer to him as Bone Thugs, of course, because he maga like stick. <laughs> Claudia Thompson, she did double option signs. She considered him cool, calm, and jovial. Tyrone Thomas, he would entertain us using his computer system at numerous formal and informal social gatherings. He was very creative and technologically inclined. He taught me how to build a CPU from scratch and how to furnish it with educational entertainment software programs. Yeah. <laughs> Task left undone must stay that way. Your parting has left a void but I will fill it with remembered joy. Life's journey only lasts for a time. Death creeps in to end life ladder that we climb. Goodbye is a difficult word to say when a loved one is gone to rest. On behalf of the Michael University College, Batch 168, 2003 to 2006, I express sympathies to the family and friends of our batchmate, Andre Whitehead. Today is actually the start of our Batch reunion. Um, there's actually a church service happening in Kingston as we speak. Andre would not be a part of the celebration, but I know he will be there in spirit. Andre, the world was a beautiful place because you were a part of it. Thank you for all the ventures you supported without complaining. Thank you for the great memories created. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you for touching lives and touching hearts. As I take on this new challenge, although you're no longer in the classroom, I know you would have been there to support me with my recordings, but sadly, you're not here. Like a shadow in the moonlight, like the whisper of the seas, like the echoes of a melody just beyond our reach, in the shadow of our sorrow, past the whisper of goodbye, love shines through eternity, a heartbeat from our eye. That night after Kiwani's meeting, Andre said to me, Jermaine, 
and I feel like we're getting old. And I said, bro, what do you mean? He said, I'm having back pain. I was there thinking to myself that, Andre, you've been lifting a lot, and I know that you have been extremely busy, so probably you're just tired. And I know that the attention to details in terms of you know, breaking down his equipment after the ending of an event, that was extremely important to him, and he was in no rush whatsoever. And I responded, and I said, bro, as we age, it comes with different complications. Just get some rest. I didn't know that would have been the end. It would have ended this way. Take care, my brother. You came, you saw, you conquered. I will definitely miss you. Kiwanis and JCDC Westmoreland will never be the same without you. You lived your life, and God decided it's your time to take your rest. See you on the other side. May your soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine upon you. And I just want to show, this is our final year magazine. He was one of the graphics artists. You know, this is our magazine right here. But, you know, his work. Thank you. Andre had another side of family, his mom's side. Um, Carl, could you stand up, please? A lot of people may not know her. That's Andre's mom. Um, 
And I also want to make some real informal to stand up, because, uh, you know, stand up. There are so proud of us now. I mean, everybody wants to make it. continue our program at this point we'll be lifting an offering and I must make you know that this offering is aid of the party aid of the Mount Salem Seventh Adventist Church and part is in aid of the Kiwanis Club of Westmoreland Capital as our deaconesses take up their position to lift up our offering let us pray. Eternal God of heaven, we give a thanks, O oh God, to know that you are still a God who cares and a God who provides. And as we are about to lift an offering, O oh dear God, help us, O oh God, as we lift this offering, we go to further on see your work. In your hand I leave everything I pray, in Jesus' name. And as we lift our offering, we sing, when we walk, with the Lord in the light of his word.
we continue with our program as we will have tributes from Brianna Brown, cousin, Harrison Memorial High, troops and company, uh, Brianna Samuels, and also Akina Elliott in that order, cousins. who Stevie was and what he meant to us. He was my cousin, my teacher, my advisor, and my confidant. Smart, selfless, humble, kind-hearted, reliable, talented, and overly creative are just some words I can use to describe Stevie. Stevie poured himself selflessly into the future of so many young persons. He was never afraid to invest his time to what he committed to. I'm one of those young persons who he poured himself into. I remember a few years ago when I was in high school, my first two CSEC subjects were chemistry and physics in grade 10. No, normally people do maths and English first. Stevie forced me to do chemistry and physics. And if I allow him, he did want push in bio as well. <laughs> so he offered me to teach me the sciences without any sort of reimbursement. I remember mommy used to always try and send a little money for him. Nope. Stevie don't want any money. He just wants me to come and show up for class on Saturdays. I did my chemistry and my physics in grade 10, and I passed my subjects. At the time, whatever doubts I had in myself, he was the one to always say, Brit, you can do it. I thank him wholeheartedly for believing in me when I didn't even believe in myself. Today, I'm a registered nurse because my cousin poured himself selflessly into my cup. He was never selfish with the knowledge that he possessed, and I was so proud to call him my cousin. Throughout the years, our bond became one that was like no other. As soon as I had a new project or an idea, he was the first person I would call. If I, would, if I was having a birthday party, um, photo shoot, he would be the first person. He knew how to help me turn whatever idea I had into a beautiful reality. The last thing that we worked together on, that we worked together was a birthday brunch that I was planning in January. Even though he was sick, I went to see him every single day when I was at work. And sometimes I didn't want to talk about planning it. And he would say, Britt, come, get the chair and sit down. How's it going? Tell me about the venue. Tell me about the food. Who's doing the music? He wanted to make sure that everything was going to be perfect. While he was in the hospital, it became a part of my ritual to go and see him every day once I was at work. He would say to me, Britt, you always know when to come at the perfect time to save me. There were instances where sometimes we're short staff. There's not enough nurses to take him to go do a procedure. And I would just be there right at the perfect time. I don't work on that unit, but I always go to see him. And if he needs to get a procedure done and there's nobody available, 
I'm leaving my unit to say I have to go and take my cousin. So watch my patience for me till I come back. The last conversation I had with Stevie two days before his passing, his words to me were, I quote, Brit, I just need to come out of this place. I need to make sure that my daughter, Ali, is going to be okay. So I need to get better. His main concern was his daughter's well-being. He needed to come out to make sure that she was going to be okay. Today, as we remember and celebrate the life of Andre, let's never forget who he truly was, a man full of love and good character. He left his mark on the earth, and I am thankful he was able to pour into me so I could be able to pour into him when he needed it the most. May his soul rest in perpetual peace. Good afternoon, everyone. Andre Antonio Whitehead. At Harrison Memorial High School, this is how we remember him. A brilliant, talented, humble, dedicated student, prefect, and head boy, 1999 to 2000. I was his history and information technology teacher. As his form teacher, mommy, I was his school mother at one point. So it means today that I am also a grandmother to his daughter. Andre was an affluent leader and Harrison Memorial High School had such an impact on his life that while at Wilmot Academy, when he needed a science lab for his students, he turned to his alma mater. Mrs. Winsome Willis, who is also present here, was the former principal. She passed the baton to me. She generously accommodated Andre and his students to complete their SBAs twice per week. It's hard to bury the youth in our lives. But be admonished this afternoon that as the Holy Bible states, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Harrison Memorial High School family want to say to the Samuels, the Whiteheads, the Sterlings, and all other relatives, close friends, and well-wishers. As the songwriter puts it, if you've got a problem that's too big to solve, stop looking to man, start looking to God. Because I know for certain, see there's not a thing you can do, oh, but there's not a mountain that my God cannot move. I've not seen a mountain that God cannot move. No, I've not seen a problem He can carry you through So just call on the master And watch what he'll do for you Cause I've not seen a mountain
Good morning. Good morning, church. Whew. I've never done this before. This is my first tribute, so let me just help you to get over my anxiety. All right? Um, good afternoon. My name is Dwight Troop, and I'm the CEO of Troop and Company Production. I am a friend, a brother, a business associate of the late Andre Whitehead. Whitehead, as he is commonly known, was helpful, humble, charismatic, and passionate about his business and taking care of his family. I know him for some 20 years from Harrison Memorial Prep all the way through to Northern Caribbean University. Today is a sad day. But I want to remember him as a man of character with an infectious smile and a gigantic personality. He was a part of the Troop and Company family in the following capacity. As he was, mul was multi-talented, he was a host. And I can remember we used to have a bi-weekly event called Lime, where we would play games and we would invite friends and business associates to come over to Lime, have a drink and eat some food. And Andre would be the first person to raise his hand and say, I'll host the event. And um, he would do such a wonderful job just entertaining the audience you know, with his words and how he would play around with the things that he would see to ensure that persons who would come to this event had a wonderful experience. He was also a DJ at playing music. And whenever our DJs that we actually pay to come and perform would turn up late, he would be the first person to jump on the turntables to play some music to ensure that the vibes at the event started on time and started well. He was an audio-visual technician when it comes down to setting up his, his cameras, you know, um, his screens, just to ensure that there is cohesion, he would be there to do that as well. He was also a graphic designer. And I remember in 2018, he was responsible for managing the Troop and Company's social media pages. He would do all the artwork, all the visuals, he would upload, when, when, whenever there's a special occasion, it would be uploaded. I had to give him no instruction. He knew exactly what to do. Fun fact. Do you know that Andre actually loves watches? But one of the things that I can remember him vividly about, his watches always has a size. You are able to see the time on Andre's hand from a mile away. <laughs> and in 2019, when his father, I think important, a Wrangler 4x4, um, we were doing promotions, because he's always a part of our promotional activity. And he, I said to him, you know, that van is a, is a bad van, you know. We need to have the van up on the road so people can see we. And I say, oh, talk to your father, man, and see if I can get the forerunner, man. You know, so once we go in the streets, and we have that van, persons are going to see us moving around and gallivanting. And him said to me, boy, I chew, no lie, you know, good for you have the van there, you know, up on the road, you know, but you have to make sure you have money in your pocket. So I say, what do you mean, so I need to have money in my pocket? Because for every three miles you go and drive that van, you're going to need to make sure you gas it up. <laughs> you know, but those are some of the fun memories I have. Um, on the 6th of February, Heaven received another angel. While we mourn his passing, we should comfort ourselves with the fact that he has left a legacy behind. As you can see, his company is still up and running. running. His company did not die when he passed. And he will leave a legacy behind that will never be forgotten. Sleep in peace, my brother, and until we meet again, we love you.
Good afternoon. Why 
Joining the persons who are bringing the condolences, I want to join on behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here right here in Mount Salem, the members, elders, leaders, to share our deepest sympathies with the family of Andre. By now you would have known that Andre spent most of his years here too. He walked down these aisles. He played on the compound here. He attended Sabbath school here. And so, Daddy, uh, we share in your pain. Aunties, I'm not sure if mommy's here. Where's mommy? Mommy, we share in your pain. Remember that God is ever present, is ever near. And when those moments come, reflect on the times that you've spent with your son. I'm not sure, I'm assuming you're the daughter. I'm assuming, oh sorry, sister, okay. 
All right, so the little one, I don't know if the little one is here, but she's here. Oh, I can't say I understand, but rest assured, little Ali, that God will take care of you. You have a heavenly father who loves you. And so as we continue the program, we are going to take tributes from Sister Alia Whitehead from Harrison Old Boys Class of 2000 from Mount Alvernia High School, and then a musical selection from a saxophonist in that order. Good afternoon, church. Um, I'm Andre's little sister for um, the people who may not know. Um, I have a poem dedicated to him because I love him very much. I'm going to read it now. In memory of a special brother, today is full of memories of a brother laid to rest, and every single one of them is filled with happiness. For who you were, someone special, always such a joy to know. And there was so much pain when it was time to let you go. That's why this special message is sent to heaven above for the angels to take care of you and give you all of my love. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Jessica, Alia, the Whiteheads family, Samuel, I bring you greeting and comfort from a class of 2000 at Harrison Memorial High School. In extension, his friends from another Caribbean university. As I sat and I listened to Michael Teacher's College speak of Andre, I get jealous in some way. But then Miss Ali, they must remember that the grooming starts at Harrison Memorial High School. And then it continues to NCU. So when you got Andre, he was mature in his leadership role. I also must tell you at Harrison, whilst we were selecting for head boy, I believe Ryan and Whitehead cast lot to see who would be the head boy. So from then, his leadership role was present and ever much showing in whatever capacity he may be in. Also want to share with you guys that Whitehead was someone who was close to me as I was going through the passing of my mother. I can remember at the funeral he did the streaming for us. And he was always there encouraging me as I go through my time, checking in on me. So when he calls me and said, Duane, I'm in the hospital, um, I was leaving the island the next day and I said, you want me to stay? I said, I don't feel good you being in the hospital because I have terrible memory of that hospital. And he said, I'm going to be okay. So I went over, continued talking to him. When I got back, I immediately went to the hospital. And then he told me the news. It's like I was reliving something all over again. But I can remember his strong voice, as he would say, you know, I, I'm putting things in order. And I said, I don't want to talk about that. He said, I'm putting things in order. It, it, it is what it is. And I remember him being strong for me while I tried to go through a terrible time again. And every night as I visit him and I sat by his bedside, it's like I'm going through something, but he came on telling me I'm going to be okay. It was more of a therapy and a reminder, but it was good that I'm beside a friend who can comfort me as I give him comfort too. And on the day, the last day, I think it was Monday, he texted me and said, 
grieves if you come in to look for me, conceal yourself because a patient across from me, suspicious people, is coming to look for him. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm coming nonetheless. I got distracted, got some things happening. This year has been a rough year, but I got distracted. Nonetheless, I was racing to see him on the Tuesday evening. Racing because I drove past the hospital and we were talking about him, my spouse and I, and I was racing back to see him. And I got a call from Jessica. She said something to me about the phone service. So I didn't hear. So I said, Jessica, I'm coming over there now. I'm on way. And he said to me, Dre, pass. And I, I, I don't know what happened, but I pulled over and I said, it is done because I've seen pain and struggle. I've seen him when he had his mental breakdown and he called and he said, he's come to me now. I've listened to him speak and cry. I've watched him go through his perils. So on that time when I got the news, it was more of a bitter but comforting news. Because to see your friend, a person who's instrumental in your character, in your building, in your surrounding, someone who encourages you, if there's something to do and you call Whitehead, he's going to be there. I wanted a logo for a company we started and the night I was at work talking to him and he's sending me the logos back and front and we, until we finally got it. If there's a show that Whitehead's supposed to be, West Blue Whitehead is there earlier than everybody else, dedicated to it. So whilst I watched him in a hospital bed, it was not the sight or the memory I wanted to have of him. But life has an expected end. And sometimes the ending is terrible, but it's an expected end. And as I leave with comforting words, there's a passage of scripture that says, and this is, I, I, I was going through it last week, and when I got it, I said, oh my, this is what he said. He said, and I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their work do follow them. We hope that the memory of Whitehead lives on in everyone. And little Ali, I must tell you from the class of 2000, you will have aunties and uncles you can call upon at any time. You will have counselor to give you counsel. You will have brothers who will come look after you. You will have uncles who will protect you. And we want to make sure that you will illuminate the light of your father in any place that you go. So, brothers and sisters, I know you said death is a horrible thing, but I must tell you, death sometimes is the comfort to a sorrowful moment. So as we remember Whitehead, I hope that his memory and his legacy lives on in all of us, and that one day, when all of this shall pass, when we shall all see that great getting up morning, we will meet him again and we'll talk about times that we share whilst we were on earth. Thank you.
Mr. Whitehead, as we called him, became a part of the Godfrey Stewart High family just before we went into COVID. 
It was the period of trying to navigate the new norm of social distancing and how to keep the school populace and the general public abreast with the happenings within our institution at the time. Mr. Whitehead was one Mr. Whitehead was the one who, through his expertise, afforded the institution to get the image out there with his skills and providing excellent video recording. While working with us at Godfrey Stewart, he was also he always maintained a high level of professionalism was always willing to give advice in areas when we weren't so sure as to what we are doing. And his advice has always made sense. In other words, he created an ease in getting things done and ensured that we give it our best. He displayed a level of patience that was second to none, especially with our students. He demonstrated a different level of work ethic while working with us. I would say he was the consummate of professionalism. Especially in media, he had a lot of respect for his job and in turn expected the same level of respect from us so that he would be able to work with us. The nation has lost a quality young man. He knew what he was about. He was making strides and he was surely missed by the Godfrey Stewart family. The nation has lost a quality young man. He knew what he was about. He was making strides. And who would have left a legacy? An excellent, sorry, an excellent work ethic legacy that anyone we at Godfrey Stewart High consider to give a chance to project or image out there will need to be able to display these qualities for us to consider them to be remarkable. Just as how this young man, Andre Whitehead, was remarkable.
miss your voice, miss your smile, everything about you worth the while. Always wondering where you are. I hope you're with us, near or far. Asking the driver of PM 3136, you are blocking the exit, so you are driving a car. PM 3136, please. They're asking you to allow the free flow of traffic.
we realize that not enough time will give us enough that we would want to say. Not enough time will be given to share of all the memories that you would have had with your friend, your brother, whosoever he was to you. I laughed and I looked back and I said, I met him, I didn't even know that I met him. He is my cousin and I didn't even know. But such is life that sometimes we take for granted the moments we spend with individual until moments like these. So at this moment we'll be praying for the bereaved family. So here are the instructions. The family members will remain seated while those who are in support of the family will stand in solidarity to say here is a shoulder you can lean on as you continue to grieve the loss of your brother, your friend, your close relative. So we are standing. Those who are in support of the family will stand while the family members will remain seated. Bow your heads with me as we pray. There is no pain that you have not feel. There is no sorrow, Jesus, that you aren't acquainted with. And even now, God, as we would have gone through this funeral service and we are at the end, we pray, God, even now that you may touch a heart, that you may touch an individual who is crying at the moment. Father, we realize that a mother, a father, sisters, uh, family members, and even so, a daughter is missing a person who they have been looking to, a person who have played such an important role in their life. Father, we are praying for the gap that which would have created because of death, that you may come for them even now and let them realize that you can fill that gap, and even so, that you would have made preparation for those who mourn. We pray, God, that they may look to the day when there shall be no more pain, when there shall be no more death, and even so, we can call it by name. God, there will be no more cancer. Father, we are asking that even so, that every individual who was standing and who even are seated, that they may realize that death is after them, that they may to make preparation and come follow after you, because in you there is life and life more abundant. We pray as we leave here that we may not only say that it was a good funeral service, but we may live knowing that you are expecting us, as Pastor would have said, that we may live to the fullest, that we can say at the end that we would have finished our race. We are praying, God, for those who are left to mourn in a special way, that their nights as they get darker, their days as they seem more shorter, that they may find a little sense of peace in you. Be with us once more, we ask, and bless our endeavors once more, we pray. To your Sunday, we pray and say thanks. Amen. Amen. I want to, on behalf to read this acknowledgement. The family of the late Andre Antonio Whitehead, AKA CB Dre, wishes to express sincere gratitude and appreciation to all who have generously offered prayers, visits, calls, kind words of comfort and expressions of love. Your act of kindness have brought comfort and strength during our time of bereavement. May God's blessing attend you all. And you have been a wonderful, wonderful audience. As we prepare to recess, I'm going to invite you to stand with me. But just before you do so, I was told that the repast is at the West Jamaica Conference Auditorium or Cafeteria. Cafeteria, that's um, after you pass the Cornwall Regional Hospital. And the next hospital you turn right there, that's the compound that you will go on, it's in the cafeteria. So the repast will be there. We will use to recess. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. 
sing his mercy and his grace. So some persons here are going to have to help them because it's not in the program. And so we, as we 